Let us uh, work out an example. An ideal air standard diesel cycle operates with a compression ratio of 18.75 and a cutoff ratio 2.4283. The temperature and pressure at the beginning state 1 are given. We are asked to determine thermal efficiency, mean effective pressure and the second law uh, efficiency. Okay. So, uh, in the same manner as what we did before, we will walk through the cycle and, uh, uh, and determine property values at each state point and then carry out the analysis. So, state 1 is the ambient or dead state. So, this is easy to get. So, using this value of temperature, we retrieve these uh, values uh, specific internal energy U, uh, S0 and Vr from the table. Now, S is equal to S0 because this is the ambient state. Now, at state 2, Vr is equal to Vr1 divided by the, uh, co the compression ratio because it is an isentropic process. So, using this value of uh, uh, for Vr, we enter the tables and we retrieve uh, these values from the table. Now, the entropy uh, remains the same because it is an isentropic process. I will explain in a minute how this value uh, is, uh, is computed. Okay. Now, uh, at the um, uh, end of the heat addition process, temperature is uh, the uh, temperature T3 is equal to T2 times Rc because it is a constant pressure process. Let us see how the uh, you know how this comes about. So, between uh, state 2 and 3, notice that if I apply uh, equation of state at uh, state 2 and 3, P2 V2 is equal to R T2 and P3 V3 equal to R T3. So, if we divide these two expressions, we get T3 over T2 equal to uh, v 3 over v 2. What is that? P 3 is equal to P 2. So, v 3 over v 2 is nothing but R C which is why we have uh, done uh, this here. So, T 3 is equal to T 2 times R C. So, with this value of temperature, we go into the table and retrieve the air table and retrieve U, S 0 and V R. What is that? S here has to be evaluated using our uh, expression S of t comma p equal to S0 of t minus R times. Uh, here we can use an expression that involves uh, V. So, it can be calculated using the TDS relationship. Okay. Now, uh, for state 4, we uh, evaluate Vr like this. Notice that for state 4, the compression ratio, the compression ratio is V3 over V4. Okay. For, uh, for the expansion process, the compression ratio is V3 over V4. So, V3 over V4. Now, we may write this as V3 over V2 times V2 over V4. V3 over V2 is nothing but Rc and V2 over V4, notice that V4 is equal to V1. So, V2 over V4 may be written as 1 over R. So, V4 over V3 is equal to R over Rc okay, and that is what we have done here. So the so the effective expansion ratio is um, uh, is nothing but R over R C, okay, and that is what we have done here. Okay, so with this value for V R, we can then go to the table retrieve uh, T U. S naught is not required because this is an isentropic process, uh, so the entropy remains constant. Okay. So, notice that we evaluated P2 or we, uh, we have not evaluated P2. So, this value for P2 has been evaluated using this expression. So, we have the equation of state uh, at state 1 and 2. If we divide one by the other, we can show that 
P2 is equal to R times P1 times T2 over T1. So, this we have already seen. Now, P4 may be evaluated uh, in this manner again by writing equation of state at state 3 and state 4 and then dividing one by the other, we can eventually get P4 equal to P3 times T4 over T3 times RC over R. So, now we can actually plug in these numbers and get the values that we are looking for. The uh, work input during the compression stroke u2 minus u1 is it may be evaluated as 466.71 kilojoule per kilogram. And the work done during the cycle, which is nothing but uh, the uh, displacement work during the heat addition process plus the expansion work comes out to be this 1334.46. The net work produced during each cycle is this. Uh, 867.75. Now, heat added during the cycle again we have applied first law to process 2, 3. So, heat added during the cycle is 1564.5 and heat rejected during the cycle it comes out to be equal to this. The thermal efficiency of the cycle thus comes out to be 55.47 percent. I am sorry this should be 867.75. Let us see how this compares with the value that we obtained uh, or value that we would have obtained using a cold air standard analysis. So, let us see. So, here the uh, compression ratio is 18.75, cutoff ratio is 2.4283. Let us see. So, 18.75 comes out to be somewhere over here. Cutoff ratio 2.42833 may be something like this. So, if I 18.75, I am sorry 18.75 comes like this. So, 2.4283 RC 2.4283 line may be drawn approximately like this. So, you can see that uh, the specific work in this case is about 3 point something and the efficiency RC 2.42 somewhere here 18.75 and this. So, you can see that the efficiency the thermal efficiency from cold air standard analysis is about 60 percent or so approximately. and we are getting 55.47. So, this also shows uh, the power of the cold air standard analysis. The numbers are not uh, that different. Mean effective pressure may be calculated in the same manner as done for the auto cycle and we get this to be uh, 1071.59 kilopascal much higher than what we saw for the auto cycle because the specific power is higher. Now, exergy supplied may be evaluated directly like this where we have taken the temperature Th to be 2200 Kelvin. This is the peak temperature that is seen in the cycle okay, which would be at uh, T3 uh, at state 3. So, that is the peak temperature. So, we have taken that to be the maximum temperature in the cycle and used it as the uh, temperature for the heat source. So, exergy recovered comes out to be like this and so the second law efficiency for the cycle uh, comes out to be 72.16 percent and if we compare this with the uh, value from the cold uh, analysis, air standard analysis, we get So, 18.75 and RC 2.4283. So, we get this to be uh, approximately about 75 or so. And we get uh, the value actual value to be 72.16 remarkably close to the cold air standard value.
Now, uh, the um, air standard dual cycle is a combination of uh, the auto cycle and the diesel cycle where part of the heat release takes place at constant volume, part of the heat release takes place at constant uh, pressure. The real cycle for example, the real auto cycle uh, is probably uh, better represented by the dual cycle than the auto cycle itself. Let us just go back and take a look. So, you can see here that the real auto cycle which is shown using a um, uh, chain line probably is better represented uh, as a dual cycle than the auto cycle, but uh, convention uh, dictates that we use auto cycle and that is what we have done. Okay. So, it is possible to carry out a similar sort of analysis for the for the dual cycle. We will not uh, we will not do that here. Uh, I leave that uh, to you to look at it in the uh, textbook uh, and then work out uh, some examples involving the dual cycle, but it is relatively straightforward to do that. Now, um, just to give a context, uh, I, I said earlier that in this um, uh, course, we are actually interested in the ideal cycles and as they are utilized for the actual engines. Okay. So, the relevance of uh, looking at IC engines, particularly at uh, uh, this time, uh, is, um, you know, is is probably important to, to discuss. Okay. It, it's, um, uh, it has become uh, quite popular um, to say that you know IC engines will soon be replaced by electric vehicles you know, in, the, in the near future and so on. So, the relevance of studying these cycles and IC engines uh, is, is becoming uh, very, very important. Okay. In fact, it is important to establish the relevance of studying these engines. Okay. Um, if you actually look at the, uh, the issues objectively okay, and in a quantitative manner, here I am referring to this article that appeared in uh, International Journal of Engine Research. So, all the text here are directly quoted from that article. I have not written this uh, these sentences myself, these are directly taken from the article. So, the article has a lot of uh, interesting things to say. It is written by uh, a handful of authors, about a dozen authors or so. Most importantly, it uh, says that it is possible to <coughs> reduce fuel consumption and hence CO2 emission by as much as 50 percent in SI engines. Okay. Now, in the case of CI engines, notice that uh, high filtration efficiency in diesel and gasoline engines, uh, particulate filters, urea injection and selective catalytic reduction can reduce an extremely low NOx that is 15 to 20 milligram per kilometer. In fact, there are vehicles which have tailpipe uh, unburned hydrocarbon emissions which is actually less than the hydrocarbons that are present in the ambient air. In other words, these engines take in uh, air which has a higher amount of hydrocarbon than what comes out of the exhaust. So, they are actually negative emission vehicles. So, the technology of uh, selective catalytic reduction, urea injection and filtration have become so good that for hydrocarbon emission, some of these vehicles are actually emissions negative. Now, in terms of particulate matter, remember we said that there will be soot that comes out of diesel engine which is particulate matter and also unburnt hydrocarbon. So, we have dealt with unburnt hydrocarbon here. In terms of particulate emission, it is actually uh, important to recognize that today the particulate emission from uh, these engines is of the order of 5 milligrams per kilometer which is less than the particular emission from what you get from tire wear as you drive on the road, both the tire and the brake linings wear out and they uh, give out solid particles or particulate emissions. So, the tire wear and brake line emission gives about and brake line uh, particulates is about 50 milligrams per kilometer compared to particulate emission of 5 milligrams per kilometer from the exhaust pipe. Okay. So, emissions and other things from these engines are all well under control and there is scope for probably improving them even more. The technology is mature, but still uh, improvements are being made. 
ok. So, in fact, I invite you to read this article, it has lots of other additional details ok, uh, quantitative numbers which actually discuss the, the true impact of internal combustion engines and uh, what they have to offer today. Okay. In fact, uh, we discussed uh, in, the, in the beginning of this uh, module, I uh, started by talking about this uh, Mazda engine. This engine is an example of what is possible today, what kind of, kind of improvements in efficiency and emissions are possible today. So, this uh, Sky Active G, where the G stands for gasoline, this engine operates at a compression ratio of 14 to 1. Okay. Notice that we said that auto cycle we cannot go beyond 10 because you encounter the uh, knocking problem, auto ignition or knocking problem. Now, this engine uses uh, in cylinder sensors and onboard computers and other things to continuously monitor the equivalence ratio, amount of fuel in the engine, detect knocks uh, actively and then adjust the uh, fuel uh, injected or the air fuel ratio so that the knocking is never allowed to progress. So, the auto ignition is never allowed to progress into a knock. So, it constantly monitors in cylinder parameters and then controls the amount of fuel, air and so on the, and adjusts other things. So, that the engine although it is operating at, uh, at, at a compression ratio of 14, it still operates in a stable manner. So, the computer continuously does this. It also uses additional techniques like uh, cylinder deactivation where uh, when the load on the uh, engine is less some of the cylinders are automatically deactivated, only one or two cylinders may be functioning, the other two may just be motoring, idly going back and forth. So, this reduces emissions and also improves the thermal efficiency of the engine, ok, because the, the thermal efficiency of these engines typically tend to be high at high load and somewhat uh, poor at part load. So, by deactivating the cylinder, the remaining, the remaining operational cylinders are actually operating at high load. So, their efficiency continues to be high. Now, Sky Active D is a diesel engine version of, uh, uh, of this Sky Active engine and it also uses advanced technologies. It uses a lower compression ratio. In fact, startlingly, it uses a compression ratio of 14 again, but it has uh, much higher uh, fuel efficiency, much less emissions and so on. So, there is still a lot of uh, scope for improving uh, efficiency and emissions of internal combustion engines. Okay. So, the point that I am making here is that it is too early to, uh, to write off the internal combustion engine without actually doing a fair objective and quantitative comparison of the electric vehicle and the internal combustion engine. That is very, very important. That makes what we have studied so far, discussed so far all the more relevant. You need to have quantitative uh, numbers and concepts and facts so that a fair comparison between IC engines and electric vehicles can be made when it comes to emissions per, uh, per unit power or emissions per seat kilometer, passenger kilometer traveled.